faulty PCB boards, cabinets that rot, and CRT monitors that go out. Arcade machines put through the ravages of time. Every day another one is lost to the sands of time. However, thanks to preservation methods, we have ways of rediscovering what could have been lost. But what was worth playing then? What is worth playing now? This is 20 Credit Review. Carrier Airwing is a horizontal shoot 'em up released by Capcom in 1990 and is a spiritual sequel to UN Squadron. This is a fast paced shooter with jets that spans across various levels and landscapes. But although shoot 'em ups may seem formulaic at first glance, there is a certain way to craft a good shooter, and for a developer, it can be hard to nail down just what makes a good entry in the genre. Is this a recommended entry? Without further ado, let's review. First of all, let me begin by saying that this game really doesn't try its hand at anything new and takes established tropes put together a solid looking title. The way the aircraft look, the tanks, helicopters, and various scenery all have a semi-realistic anime look to them that I really enjoy. It's also nice not to be fighting in a spacecraft for once. You got three different chats to choose from, an F-14 Tomcat, an F-18 Hornet, and an A-6E Intruder. At the select screen, they tell you what jets are good for what. For example, the F-14 Tomcat is good at air-to-air. -air. The Hornet is good for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground, therefore making it the most balanced, and the Intruder is good with air-to-ground. Although these are the descriptions, the multiple playthroughs of this game hasn't convinced me that there is really that big of a difference between the various aircraft in terms of offensive capabilities. On the bottom left of the screen, you will see a fuel gauge. Not only is this for fuel, but this also doubles as a life bar as well. This lets your jet get hit multiple times before actually losing a life. Or should I say, a continue. When your fuel gauge empties, you won't lose a life like many other games of the genre. Rather, your lives, if you want to call it that, are all tied to the gauge, so make sure to keep that topped off. Throughout the level, when you shoot down certain enemies, well, the ones that are red and orange, they will drop an item. This item can be a weapon switch, or it can be extra fuel. Just like in the previous game, UN Squadron, there is a shop where you can choose the secondary weapons for the next level fuel tank sizes, and shields. You will earn money throughout the course of the level you just played. Using that money, you can purchase shop goods. What bothers me about this system, however, is the fact that they assign which items you can take into the next area. The problem with this is that many levels have tons of ground enemies, and when you have a weapon like a missile salvo, it doesn't always translate to an easy takedown unless you position your jet on the enemy's level. When you are allowed to use air to ground weapons like napalm, then it gets getting through these stages a lot smoother. Honestly, this is the only real complaint I have about this game. Overall, this is a really polished horizontal shoot 'em up with great graphics and fast paced gameplay. There's something really satisfying with taking down the enemies. Somehow, this title just feels just right as you play it. It's hard to describe. But the mixture of the fast action, great controls, and solid graphics make this a winner that I truly recommend trying out. Alright, looks like that concludes our video. So, if you like this kind of stuff, why not subscribe? And, if you like this video, I could always use a thumbs up. But hey, most importantly, thanks for watching.